come in here and Okay, I am uh what will headed out. Them, I'm gonna get us some yeast and some toilet paper. Um, need anything? Guys, I have my headphones on. I can't hear you. Can I ask you something? Yeah, sure, man. I mean, we're all scared. It's a weird time. Guys, I can't hear you with my headphones on. Do you ever wonder why there's no great Terminator sequels other than T2? No, I've never thought of that. I'm gonna go take care of our essential necessities. Think about it all the time. Headphones. Think of genre movies like the recipe for a favorite dish. Comfortable, familiar, and expected. It can be satisfying, but become repetitive and boring. The Terminator establishes elements that are reinforced by T2. A savior in the past who's necessary for humanity to survive in the future. A hunter that has a single mission to prevent the future from coming to pass and that is also unstoppable. And a warrior who's sent to protect the savior from the hunter. Combine this with time travel, the vision of the future beset with machines who have pushed humanity to extinction, and car chases. Original Terminator is a high tension, low budget thrill ride. And oh yeah, guns. Lots and lots of guns. Phased plasma rifle in the 40 watt range. It's just what you see, pal. You're gonna come in here in Terminator, the savior is Sarah Connor. A teen waitress will become the mother of John Connor. The one person who can unite humanity against Skynet. A mechanized AI determined to abolish humanity in a nuclear war called Judgment Day. The Hunter is the T-800, a cyborg infiltration unit that passes for human but has no human weaknesses. The warrior is Kyle Reese, a soldier from the future sent back in time by John to protect Sarah. He unknowingly is also John Connor's father and falls in love with Sarah. Terminator is establishes a ton of iconography from the hard scrabble future war to the unstoppable force of the terminator to the humor and endlessly repeatable dialogue established a visual language of car chases motorcycles tracked trailers and gunfights all done practically it would launch james cameron's career as a filmmaker in t2 the savior is john and sarah shares the role of warrior with a returned reprogrammed t800 they battle against a new hunter a prototype terminator the t1000 cameron references the first film which creates iconic moments establishing t2 as one of the greatest action films and sequels of all time the scale is massive but the elements are the same car chases motorcycles tractor trailers and this time helicopters it would be 10 years before there was another Terminator movie, and everything would change. The T-800 returns again as a protector. Sent back by Kate Brewster to save herself and her future husband, John Connor, it, the T-800 unites Kate and John to protect them against a new hunter, the TX. Set in the future war, her Terminator salvation has the savior as a young Kyle Reese, not yet part of the Resistance. For the protector is a shared role of John Connor and Marcus Wright. The Hunter is Skynet, writ large. Terminator Genesis rewrites the past as it's set during the events of the first Terminator. The savior is Kyle Reese. T-800 and Sarah Connor are the protectors. And the Hunter is a corrupted John Connor, who's also a Terminator. Terminator Dark Fate abolishes all other sequels after T-2, where Judgment Day has not happened. Sarah Connor is the protector, joined by a future soldier, Grace, and another T-800. Danny is the savior, and the hunter is a new Terminator called the Rev-9, built for the internet age. Can the unsatisfying nature of these twists on a recipe of a Terminator film be boiled down to a single faulty ingredient or two? Is it as simple as the absence of James Cameron? of the growing reliance on digital effects. Nice night for a walk. I think it's a combination of things. After all, James Cameron has gone all digital with the Avatar films, hasn't he? Hey man, I... In the recipe for a Terminator film, the climax is a bloody, hard-fought personal battle that requires sacrifice. In Terminator, Kyle Reese dies protecting the woman he loves. And Sarah barely destroys the Terminator. In T2, a badly wounded Sarah and the damaged T800 jointly destroy the T1000. 
So what happens in the later sequels? In T3, John and Kate escape unharmed while the T-800 destroys itself and the TX with a nu nuclear blast. Salvation ends with Skynet set back by a nuclear blast. The climax of Genesis is Sarah and Kyle escaping unharmed while the T-800 destroys John Connor in a nuclear blast. Dark Fate has Grace give her life for Danny in a mostly meaningless way as the T-800 once again destroys the Rev-9. I don't think it's an accident that all the non-Cameron Terminator films end with Arnold saving the day. Except for the one he's not in. <laughs> While the T-800's Carl from Dark Fate is a wonderful exploration of what a Terminator with 25 years learning and no purpose would become, Mackenzie Davis's grace is the heart and beating soul of the movie. Lacking a resonant carthesis can rob any film of satisfaction. There's also something to be said for style. T3 implements massive physical set pieces, but it also culminates away from the personal. Each subsequent film relies more and more on digital environments to create scope, but in bare similitude is lost. James Cameron movies, including Avatar, never lose their physical connection to reality. In T2, the entirely liquid metal T1000 never leaps impossibly across an area the way the Rev-9 does in Dark Fate even though it clearly should have that ability. The most clear demonstration of its power is also eerily human. It never breathes while running. There are no heaves, no gasping for air, just tireless automation. It's infinitely relatable to the human eye, yet something more. The TX is constantly doing impossible things, subconsciously removing the believability of the threat. The most terrifying moment is when a corrupted T-800 destroys the vehicle by simply pounding on it. Note that none of these moments in these sequels are at the end of the films. These moments of verisimilitude are abandoned for bigger, more impossible set pieces. In T3, the TX attacks in a helicopter, so the T-800 attacks in a bigger one. In Salvation, the molten steel that destroys the T-1000 and T2 is not enough to destroy a T-800 and only a nuclear bomb can destroy the facility. Genesis destroys another facility as a time machine explodes. Dark Fate crashes a massive military aircraft into a hydroelectric dam, which the humans escape by crashing a parachuted Humvee. In the pursuit of scale, these sequels lose the very core of the story, the protection of human life against all odds, and an enormous personal cost. Perhaps it really is as simple as needing James Cameron's directorial muscle to push back against a star's ego to ensure a satisfying ending. Or to strip away digital effects bloat enough to ensure their similitude. Dark Fate is proof enough that the many step removed back of executive producing is not enough, so Dark Fate is probably the best of the post-T2 sequels. The ingredients for a Terminator film seem simple. The hunter, the warrior, the savior, and big action sequences. As in any recipe, execution is as important as the ingredients. Each Terminator sequel deviates from the recipe with an emotionally empty climax or an aesthetic that abandons the flavor profile of the original, leaving the audience unsatisfied. The only question that remains is whether the meal has been spoiled for good. Come with me if you want to eat.